So then just a duck. Thursday, the 3rd of October, and we're calling the school committee meeting together. Our first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I want to remind you that this meeting is being recorded, so if you have um, any communication device, um, if you can silence it or turn it off, that would be most helpful to us. Um, our chair, David Teresi, is across the street at the Kittredge School, um, so we're going to get started without him, um, and then when he joins us in a few minutes, um, he'll take over. So our first order of business is public comment. Do we have any public comment tonight? Seeing none. Um, we'll proceed to our recognition agenda item, which is the announcement and the approval of the Hall of Fame inductees. Um, that ceremony is going to take place on October 30th at Stevens Memorial Library at 6.30 in the evening. Um, I happen to have chaired this, um, this group. Our rules require us to have a five-person committee chaired by the vice chair of the school committee, um, joined by another member, which is um, the very able Amy Mabley. Um, who's done this process a couple of times uh, before. Um, we also had um, a community member, Kate Rossi. We had an administrator, um, Greg Landry, and we had a teacher, Jane Broderick. Um, so we received two nominations this year, and there's an excerpt um, in the packet. Um, each one of the uh, people who's nominated gets a nomination and gets a number of endorsements um, as well, um, at least one from a supervisor. Um, and we can select up to two new members of our Educator Hall of Fame every year. So these two um, people who were brought to our attention are extremely good examples of educators in North Andover um, who certainly are, um, in the opinion, in the unanimous um, opinion of the selection committee, um, very worthy of being recognized in our Hall of Fame uh, process. So one is Kathy Aminsky, who taught kindergarten from 1973 to 1999. Um, and the other is Tom McGowan, uh, who taught math at North Andover High School and what we used to call North Andover Junior High, um, which is now the Atkinson School. So anybody who went to school at the Atkinson School and notices that there are lockers there, that's because it was formerly our junior high before we built our middle school. And he was here from 65 to 2002. And really, um, so many wonderful stories about these, these two people. Kathy, um, you know, there was a story of um, a young man who'd had a house fire. Kathy's husband was a firefighter and how she cared for him for the first few months of school until he was comfortable really fully participating in class and just many, many stories of her taking photographs um, of, of kids and sharing those with family members um, over time and um, Tom McGowan being a lead of the, um, the math team and really encouraging kids to pursue math. So those are the two people. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions? Um, so our rules require us to vote. Our agenda just says to approve. Um, so I, I would ask the committee, do you, do you feel like you want to take a vote? Can we approve by vote? Can we approve by vote? So I'll move that we approve uh, the uh, Hall of Fame, Education Hall of Fame nominees, Kathy Aminsky and uh, Tom McGowan uh, for 2019. Thanks. All right, so we have it moved by Mr. McDevitt and second by Ms. Mabley. Um, should we take a roll call vote? Sure. Um, Ms. Lynch? Yes. Mr. Yes. McDevitt? Yes. And the chair says yes, so the vice chair says yes, the acting chair, however you say that. 4-0. Uh, the acting interim. <laughs> 
Um, our next order of business is the consent agenda. Um, we have a donation from North Andover Music Association, and we have the approval of our minutes. So there is information in the packet from the North Andover Music Association. They donated a tenor saxophone for student use, um, the only maintenance of which will be regular wear and tear maintenance. And they donated a cabinet for um, music files for the full year chorus program. Um, and the total of those, excuse me? It's in the middle school, which is kind of oh, neat, I think. Sorry about that. that. Yes, right? it is in the middle yeah. school program. Um, so the total of those two donations together are $3,705. I'll move that we approve uh, the donations from the North Andover Mu Music Association. Second. So moved by Mr. McDevitt, second by Ms. Lynch. Any discussion? Super thankful to all the work that these guys do. Um, I think this is the second time in six months they've come in to donate, so Absolutely. appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And they had a beautiful day for their... Um, for their NESPA mm -hmm. last week um, on Saturday. So we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. No, we have to roll call? I don't think no, so. No, we can't. Okay, all right. Yeah. So we're all in favor. Aye. Aye. 4 0. Oh. Can um, I just go back to the um, yes. Hall of Fame for a second? Please. Um, Sorry, I just, we moved too fast? I, no, I just wanted to mention I think it's just, it fits nicely. Um, that that's also the ceremony for professional teaching status um, and that is being held at the library um, this year we have 17 teachers um, for teaching status if you call last year uh, I had pneumonia so I was laid up that day and I think mr. Mealy was the MC in my place um, but one of the things that was mentioned was that the rotunda was really as beautiful as it is it was really packed Really um, so Greg Landry, the HR director, is working with Loreen and the librarian to look up uh, possibly doing the event on the other side of the rotunda um, if it's too many folks. And that's where they do the Little Knights musical, mm. uh, the Little Knights uh, band uh, cho Little I mean, Knight choir music. from uh, North Andrew Middle School. They pack it in over there and she really opens it up. So. You know, Loreen and I were thinking maybe we could have some refreshments, you know, in the really nice rotunda room. But then we were thinking we're not sure we'll get that by the head librarian, Kathleen. So, um, but okay. that will be that night as well at 6.30, uh, and that's October 30th. So. Magnificent. Thank you. Um, so our chair has arrived. <laughs> um, we were at approval of minutes, so I will pass you the gavel. It is 10 minutes after 7, and David Tracy will take over as chair. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. I apologize for my tardiness. I was, was across the street at Kittredge Open House. You could see all the cars out there. That's what's going on. Not, not a big crowd here tonight, just a few people. So we are, what, approval minutes? Is that what you said? Okay. Um, so we did the announcement of, okay. Okay, great. So uh, minutes from our last meeting, September 12, 2019. Could I have a motion to accept the minutes as presented in the packet? I'll move that we approve the minutes for September 12, 2019, as presented in the packet. Second. Second by Ms. Lynch. Any discussion? None? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. The ayes have it, 5 0. Okay. We did the donation as well yes. from okay. the music session. Okay. Okay. Uh, student report. Jack is here. Yes, he is. And we have some new, new folks as well. Eamon and Micah. Mika is not here. Mika. Okay, welcome. All right. What do you get um, today? So we have quite a few things that we just want to share with you guys from the last month or so that we've been in school. Um, so, yeah, Eamon can start. Um, so this past month in sports, we've had... Hey, Eamon, before, uh, we know Jack pretty well, but maybe you can introduce yourself sure, and yeah. give uh, us a little, I'm, little, I'm a little bio. And yeah, I'm Eamon O'Carroll. Uh, my older brother, Liam, held this job a couple of years ago. Yep. Um, I'm a distance runner. I'm on the cross-country team. Yeah. Uh, and I'm a junior. I'm the class president. Uh, that's about it. Great. <laughs> well, welcome. We're glad to have you. Yeah, thank you. And you, Jack, as well. Yes. So, we so in terms of sports for the cross country team, they've been having a pretty exceptional season. The girls' team is currently six and zero. Oh. The boys' team is currently five and one. And the soccer team has been having a phenomenal season as well. They've, as far as we know, up to last week, they had 
no goals scored on them the entire season. The boys' team, that is. And I don't know about the girls' team, but I hear they've been doing fairly well they've also. They've only had four goals scored on them, and I mm-hmm. think they've scored like 29. Yeah. Wow. That's phenomenal. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, in addition, in sports at the high school, there's been, as you guys all know, the Triple E mosquito ban or the Triple E like field use ban. So a lot of sports practices and sports games have had to have been moved up to at first, I think the cutoff was 7 p.m. And then um, I think it's now like 6 or 630. And so that affected a lot of sports at the high school, especially um, the football games. It's probably the most notable of those because like that's where some of the biggest crowds come out um, at night at the high school so there's only been one home game where that's been like a problem but um, that so I think they moved a lot of the football games to a way where the Triple E um, isn't as big of a problem so those can be maybe night games but that's been something that's affected some sports at the high school there's been some grumbling about it too, but for the most part, it's been accepted fairly well. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of the Nesbitt competition, which you mentioned, um, the high school band had its best starting competition ever. They scored a 77 uh, on a scale to 100, which is a silver for them, and they hope to improve throughout the season and hopefully get a gold, which is, I believe, a 90. Is that correct? Do you know? Okay. I should know. <laughs> <laughs> I can say point whatever. We did that last time and no one got it. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool, too. I'm pretty sure that the like theme of the um, marching band show this year is superheroes. They always have like a cool like theme that their show is like based on. Um, it, it was chess a few years ago. I don't know if it was last year or the year before. I can't remember, but... Yeah, and then superheroes this year, so that's kind of a cool, um, cool way that the band is um, performing this season. Um, and additionally, last weekend was a busy day for the senior class. So from um, seven thirty in the morning to two in the afternoon, we were at the or to three in the afternoon, we were at the farmers market in North Andover, volunteering in the morning for setup and then clean up in the afternoon. And then in exchange for us volunteering with the setup and cleanup, they let us sell slush to like the people at the farmer's market. Um, So it was a pretty nice day. We were really lucky uh, with the weather because that incentivized a lot of people to buy the slush. Um, And that was a good fundraiser that we had last Sunday. Um, Also on Sunday, that same night from 4 to 6 p.m. was our senior kickoff, which was a new event that we Uh, started this year at the high school we're hoping that maybe it'll become some kind of a tradition in the future where um, at this event we asked parents to donate pizza salad desserts drinks whatever they could and then um, the senior class was all invited to come to the high school courtyard to um, to have like this food and these drinks and also um, to pick up our senior shirts which we had a design contest and so everybody who ordered a shirt came and got the chance to pick it up uh that night it was beautiful weather so it was a really um it was a really good event that we're happy that we started uh we played like we had yard games out like um can jam and spike ball and like just frisbee and like it it was a lot of fun it was a really successful event that uh hopefully becomes like some kind of a tradition for you guys next year (laughs) yeah uh, do you want me to talk about it? Just uh, sure. Yeah. Uh, so student council has been running uh, some campaigns in order to try and get people more involved in the school. So one of them is called Hashtag Nights Care. And you post on social media, Hashtag Nights Care, and then about something, whether it be sports or friends or anything of that nature. And then you nominate three people to do the same thing. And it's really about getting people involved and aware of school spirit. There are signs up around the school that say, Hashtag Nights Care about... And like, for example, outside the Spanish classroom, it's like about different cultures. And it's really about getting people involved and making sure that they're aware of school spirit and school culture. Um, We also had a new development in the foreign language department where there's now the National Honor Society of French or the National Honor Society of Spanish or German. And I know for the uh, Spanish students, it's only available to AP, but for German and French, it's available to anyone who is a junior or a senior. 
and it's really just a way you get to wear the same blue uh, I'm not sure what the word is but the blue stole stole thank you the blue stole <laughs> at graduation if you're a member and the requirements are similar to that of regular national honor society in that you have to volunteer you have to have a certain grade point average and you must be a uh, student in good standing uh, so that's just a new development and a mm -hmm. way to get kids who wouldn't otherwise be in national honor society into national honor society yeah and encourages kids to continue to study a language exactly yeah. through their junior mm -hmm. and senior year yeah um going back to what Eamon was talking about beforehand about Knight's care in go like kind of connected to that idea has been um a new campaign initiative, initiative. Um, yeah initiative by Mr. Meehan uh with the advisories and the like kind of starting a new advisory curriculum at the high school with character strong so it's basically um while in the past, advisory, a lot of the times has been just like somewhere where high schoolers go every other week and we just kind of sit there and nobody really knew why we had it. Mr. Meehan um, decided to bring in this uh, initiative where it basically promotes um, certain ideals and positivity and um, like embodiments that the high school student body should, um, should have. And it, I think it breaks it down by grade. So we went over them on the first day of school at our first day assemblies. I think that the senior class, one of the like traits that they are hoping to instill through the advisory curriculum is like self selflessness. And um, I'm not sure about the other grades, but each one has like a specific characteristic that they're going for. And um, so personally, in my advisory, we've been every single advisory. My advisory teacher, Miss Hoagland, has sat us down and like gone through uh, what Mr. Meehan's um, recommendation has been for us to, or I assume it's Mr. Meehan, but whoever sends this out for us to do during that period in advisory. So uh, last week, it was like a challenge to, um, to somehow do like a good deed that you wouldn't have done on any other day, um, like by, by the time we had our next advisory. And um, when we actually got to back to advisory yesterday, uh, the majority of my advisory had done that. So we just went around and talked about it. And it's kind of a more positive way that advisory has been working this year than in years past where we really just sat there and nothing really happened. But um, I will say I'm not sure every advisory is following through on this, but um, I know that mine has. So I hope that it's something that continues or possibly spreads more and more teachers will follow through with that during advisories. Um, yeah, yeah, so also um, the from September, I believe it was September like 7th through September 18th was the Spanish exchange at the high school, which um, I was a part of it. And it was a really, really awesome experience. So I think it was 26 or so Spanish students uh, came over here and there were like 20 American hosts. I, I think those are the numbers, but um, we it, we had so much fun. The Spaniards we brought to like Red Sox games. We uh, brought them to the football game. That It was a 4 p.m. game, but we brought them to the football game. Um, we showed them like all sorts of American things that they wouldn't um, have been able to experience in Spain. Like they thought that the weirdest things were like so cool. Like we drove by an ice cream truck and my Spaniard was just so amazed that they actually exist. And yeah, so um, it was it was really interesting to see like weird things like that, that in their culture, like just aren't uh, just aren't things that exist. Target was another thing that they really loved was the giant Sorry. store at Target and Chick-fil-A. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it's all coming back to me. But uh, we brought them to Salisbury Beach. They had a few days where they went into Boston um, and Salem, Mass, uh, just for day trips. And then we were responsible for um, entertaining them when they got back. Um, it was a really awesome experience. And we're going to end up going to live with the Spaniard that we hosted in February um, from like February break. And then the week after February break, too, we'll be in Spain. Um, yeah, so that's something that was just like a really awesome experience that we're looking forward to uh, February now. Um, so not next week, but the following week is Spirit Week at the high school where we try and encourage students to dress up, participate in games, get involved just in whatever way they can. And it all culminates in the Spirit Rally, which is going to be 
the 18th? Yeah, October On 18th. October 18th, which is the same day as the homecoming game and the homecoming dance, mm-hmm. which hopefully there'll be a hard frost before then, so it's a late <laughs> game. Yeah. But uh, so yeah. we are hoping to get kids involved with new activities, new activities this year. Um, I don't know specifically what those are, but the student council has been throwing around some ideas, and they're going to try and get those set up for the following week so that we can have a great spirit week. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And then lastly, um, Officer Enright, who is the student o- student resource officer at the high school, is beginning this new initiative at the high school. Uh, it's a chapter of a group which is taking on these large tobacco companies which have pushed um, vaping, tor- dar- targeted advertisements for vaping towards young people. And the idea is to get students involved it's more political than some other things that the school does, but to get them involved in fighting back against these companies which have so negatively affected our health and gotten so many people involved in something that is very dangerous. Mm-hmm. I'm glad yeah. you brought that up. I just, just a question, because um, I was going to ask this about vaping. Um, we're a month into the school year. Um, a lot in the news about vaping. Uh, the governor's banned all vapes across right. the board. Have you seen any kind of decline in uh, vape use by your uh, peers? I would say even with all of the signs and the warnings and the actual things posted around the school, it's still a very prevalent thing at the school. While less visible, it's still there, definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the greatest part is um, the students that have worked with the administration to start that group and work with Officer Enright. And in fact, I got a call from a reporter the other day. I'm not sure what it's called anymore. We used to have a North End of a paper. And now I think it's Patcher Citizen. No, it's 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 yeah. Like so um, the, he was re- indicating that he had been contacted by someone from the community about all the different components going on with our board of health. They were going to do a ban right before the governor. Right. Um, but more importantly, the additional patrols, monitoring, awareness. Um, so I think they're going to do a featured article about not only the group but Ms. Barzak and the middle school and the high school. Yeah. I know uh, Officer Enright also discussed possibly starting like a uh, North Andover High School watch where um, he would set up a remind and whoever, whichever students um, would like to join that remind, um, it would be like a method for uh, students who find like vaping to be a problem in a certain area in the school to report it so that way um, the administration can be aware that this is this is where it's a problem and it's easier to uh, face it. So that's also something that um, I think he's working on with the uh, coalition that he's starting. Yeah. Can you relay back to the students that the Board of Health has introduced some um, new restrictions um, around sale of vaping um, devices as well as, which, you know, I mean, I know the governor's ban is in effect now, um, but should that ban be lifted? Um, and it also addresses. Um, flavored cigarettes, menthol, mint, and wintergreen. They have a public hearing on October 24th. I went to the last public hearing, and there were a number of students from Merrimack College who came in and said that, you know, it affects their community in the ways that you all have described, where, you know, bathrooms are unpleasant to go into, but also affects individuals, um, really kind of getting in the way their, of their athletics and, you know, other um, enjoyments um, by having the nicotine addiction. So if you can pass on to fellow students, um, you're certainly old enough to testify in front of our Board of Health if you're interested in um, supporting or opposing that. So that's October 24th at 7 o'clock. So to, to your knowledge, is most of the, the vaping uh, flavored vapes like uh, Ms. Picard said? To my knowledge, yeah. I think that that's the um, most popular among like students our age. Yeah. yeah. I expect no matter what happens with the temporary ban that they'll be a law passed very soon to ban all uh, flavored um, vapes. Mm -hmm. It can only go so far, though. Yeah. I know. You're right. Out out of the nurse's office, what's interesting is, um, you know, the high school is really, they had a lot of meetings last year with people from public health, Dr. Frank McMillan, Jr., MD, uh, a lot of different folks. But what's interesting is the nurses were saying more and more kids have been talking about the headlines in the news about some of the materials that have been causing significant injuries to kids. So, um, uh, yeah, it's kind of an interesting component to it. I know Nurse McDonald uh, also talked with all the grades at the uh, start of the year class assemblies on the first day, and she went over, like, all the, 
like recent news about um, vaping and the complication, the health complications that arise through it. So hopefully her presentations may have um, translated to the student body, but yeah. Good. Anything else, guys? I believe that's it. Yeah. Very great. Okay. So I was just going to say one thing that I thought you might mention is uh, the soccer coach, uh, Kyle Wood. I think oh, he had yeah, his yeah, 100th yeah. win. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. I don't remember what day it was, but I think it was the Tuesday. Tuesday, yeah. Monday Tuesday. or Tuesday. Tuesday. So yeah. congratulations. And against yeah. Yeah. Coach Wood. Mm -hmm. I did see that. I, yeah, I forgot about that. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I wonder, um, with the football games being earlier, are, do you feel like you're having as much attendance? I'm, I'm thinking about the funds that are raised from – admission fees and as mm. well as sale of um, concessions and if that's going to impact those booster clubs in any way well there's only been one game so far so right. it's, yeah you know, so it's, not it's, having an as many games would certainly right. impact yeah as it far as, well. as I yeah. was like aware when I, I went to that game because the Spaniards were there so we wanted to show them what the football games were like but um, as far as it looked it didn't look like as many people as the seven o'clock games usually are um, it might be because, like, I know a lot of parents go to and work schedules probably yeah. conflicted, but also um, a lot of students came, like, later in the game. Like, not a big crowd was there at all during in the student section during uh, kickoff at 4 p.m. So Students also have games yeah. and other athletic events oh, yeah. going on at the yeah. same time. So. Mm -hmm. I was there, and it was interesting. The parents were saying, this is lovely. This is the most beautiful <laughs> weather we've ever had. <laughs> like, we're going to be home in a reasonable hour. And then the kids yeah. were like, Friday night football, there's nothing better. And there was a big, I thought there was a big crowd, particularly in the second half. But yeah. I didn't notice the, um, usually we're overrun by middle school kids. <laughs> I didn't notice the section that's usually like, you know, playing yeah. football on the other side. Right, yeah. right. There. Um, and I'd say the same thing for the band. Like, the parents were really excited. You couldn't have got two more beautiful days <laughs> than those both events but mm -hmm. it might be a little strange if like the football games at four and then the homecoming dance is what it right after it five thirty or something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So hopefully maybe we'll get that frost and mm -hmm. any other questions for the guys? No? Thank you. The great report. Thank you very much. Thank Both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. I did speak with the athletic director from the judiciary. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Eight to ten thousand dollars because we have we share for away games um, and that was the estimate. Because of the early down start, eight, eight, down eight to ten. Yep. For the season or so far? For the year. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Is, is there anything we should be thinking about that besides no. just knowing it? No. They've been running about twelve thousand to carry over into each year. Okay. So. Sometimes. They're okay. Things like this happen. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That's good information. Stupid mosquitoes. Okay, superintendent's report. All right. That was probably one of the most comprehensive student reports we've ever had. So outstanding. Almost sounded like a superintendent's report. But I will be very brief, uh, and then I'm going to turn over to Ms. Marks. I do have some announcements um, that I'd like to let you know. Uh, Marcy Bacuzzi, our special ed director, is not here tonight because she had new special ed director school in Framingham that ran pretty late, and I don't know how the traffic from Framingham getting out at 6.30 or 6. Awful everywhere. Going to make here. So she's not with us tonight, but she'll be back next time. Uh, as you know, and you got the handout last time, um, the high school is going through their 10-year reaccreditation this weekend. I know that you've all been invited. Last time we got a little handout of that overview. Um, one of the questions at the last meeting is, should it be posted? And we checked with NEASC, and they said it's best just to post it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it'll be a posted meeting, but it's, um, you know, typically that's the best way to go. Uh, so, so Bev uh, has, has done that. Um, additionally, um, just a couple other things. Um, I want to say that Helen Picard's been asking since this building's been built for a coat uh, rack in the back. And I, I, I want to say thank you to Michelle McHugh, who finally made it happen uh, with that request in the back right. And, um, and thank you to Everett, our handyman uh, that put it up. And, um, thank and you that's Hel my coat hanging on it. And that's Helen's coat. I hope I remember to take it at the end of the night. It's still on the floor where it always was. Making great progress here. That's great. Yeah. Uh, I do want to say uh, congratulations to our former wrestling coach, Carl uh, Sincotta. He has decided to retire after a very successful run uh, uh, as the wrestling coach of one of the premier programs in all of New England. And um, I know the athletic director met with him, I think, yesterday. And um, 
you know, he sent in a letter saying he'd be retiring. Uh, I do know that there'll be a full search, and that should probably begin very shortly since wrestling starts right after uh, Thanksgiving. Um, so pretty excited about that. Um, MCAS results came out, um, and I have to say that there's some different categories this year, but I was extremely pleased. I think it's some of the best progress we've made as a community uh, systemically overall. Um, you know, all of our schools are, were – uh, no schools need state intervention. All of our schools were making substantial progress to meeting uh, targets. The middle school was moderate, um, but you know these are categories with a lot of stories in them, big categories, and some of the growth there was just absolutely remarkable. And last but not least, um, the Atkinson School made significant progress in their percentile jump from 33 to 39 on the targets. And we had one school um, that was in the category of exceeding um, and that was the sergeant school. So we you know, oh, know that some of those scores had been lower a couple of years ago, um, and I thought that that was important. Um, but the new categories, just for those at home who are interested, is meeting or exceeding targets, substantial progress towards targets, moderate progress towards targets, or limited or no progress towards targets. So we'll have, uh, at the next meeting, a district overview, and then we'll have the principals and the schools in to discuss. On the same day on the 17th? No, they'll come after another one. Typically, we do the district one, so you right. get the overview. Right. Um, but we also, the, the, there's a lot of new tests. And one of the things you'll notice is, if you recall, two years ago, we were number one in the nation on MCAS testing, yet half the kids in grades three through eight <coughs> weren't even partially meeting the expectations because of the new revised MCAS. Kind of an interesting thing. Number one in the nation, half the kids aren't making it. And this was the first year of the legacy test at the high school level. So North Andover High did really well, particularly in some growth areas that, you know. The we, new test, not the last The new school. test in math and ELA. And what you'll see across the state, exactly across the state, is there'll be, um, you know, proficient or advanced they used to have. There'll be a lot more kids in the, you know, partially meeting expectations across the board. But we'll explain all that. Uh, and they did, they did really well. That was exciting. When you do explain that, can we... Uh Flip the script and have the Thompson go first this time. They always go last. Sure. To go, to go Thompson, Sergeant, that way. Atkinson's always gone well, first. So. Okay. Well, the Dr. Well, Frederick no. Atkinson School, we won't have that. Mr. Mr. Raymond's always waiting patiently, so. Yeah, maybe we'll I make think. Mr. Cushion go last. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> Your words, not mine. Um, I don't think he'd mind. Um, and... Um, one last piece. Um, no, I think that's it. And uh, I am going to turn it over to Miss Mark. She has um, just a couple announcements slash uh, small presentations on um, content area nights for parents and North End of a Reads. And if you walked in, did if anyone noticed the sign out front in the lobby, I set it out so people could see it. That's really cool. So, uh, Miss Marks. All right. So just to let people know, we have two informational nights for parents, or um, two informational sessions for both math and ELA for parents of our um, elementary students. We have, um, of, you know, the math program is still fairly new. I still hear some parents talk about, you know, understanding what those differences are. We also have the ST Math Grant, so we're working a lot with that in all of our schools now. So on um, Monday, October 28th, we have a session in the morning from 9 to 10 and a session in the evening from 7 to 8 where parents can come and meet with our um, math coach and our STEM coordinator to get information on the new math programs. And then we are doing the same for ELA. So um, raising a reader, so our um, humanities coordinator and our two literacy coaches will be presenting information on our literacy programs, um, particularly reading, and they will touch on the new reading program um, for our K through two students as well. So the importance of reading, similar to what we were talking about before the meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so just to let people know that, we also have going on at the high school, um, and we don't have an announcement up there for this one, but um, a Women in STEM Career Day, which is Tuesday, October 22nd. And I know Cara, our um, STEM coordinator, has been reaching out to people, but if anyone's out there hearing this today, uh, um, and they're interested in coming to the high school to present with our girls and participate in that event, please contact central office, um, Cara Larcom. Um, so we are looking for some more people to come on in. So those are three announcements on some events for families. Um, 
And then our North Andover Reads, um, typically this is our fourth year for North Andover Reads, and this is a community project um, that we do collaboratively, the school district and the library in town. Um, it is traditionally in the fall. Last year we did not do it in the fall because of the gas explosions and everything that was going on in town. So we did it in the spring, which tied in with our Race Amity Day, and we're very quickly back at it this fall. So um, a few years back I had read that the um, 100th anniversary of the actual Armistice Day was um, going to be 2000. 19. So we thought celebrating and honoring our veterans would be a really appropriate thing to do for North Andover Reads for this year. So we have a lot of really interesting things going on. Um, so in addition to typical movies at the library shows, we have uh, movies for kids, movies for adults, some discussion groups after some of those movies. We have books. Um, one of the books that we are using for a number of our groups is Truce by Jim Murphy. Um, and it talks about the Christmas truce of 1914, which has always been something that fascinated me. Um, and the more I learn about it, the more fascinated I am by it. Um, one of our librarians, Ann Bate, who retired last year, she was our middle school librarian, is the one who recommended that book. Ann is volunteering to do one of the book talks at the library, and what we're doing is actually kind of a jigsaw. So we're, we have different books. Um, so the Hello Girls, we have one about the Navajo code breakers, we have True, so it'll be kind of a jigsaw piece, and um, that ties in with the title of the North Andover Reads is, um, if you scroll down a little bit, it's in their footsteps. So we're really focusing on what actual people experienced um, in, in war. So in addition to that, there is a woman who found some of her mom's letters from um, servicemen during World War II, and she was able to get those letters back to family members and trace that genealogy. So she's going to be speaking. Um, Brian Sheehy, who you all know went to France through the um, History Award last year, is going to talk about his experience over there and talk about Philip O'Connell, who was a veteran um, well, lost his life um, during the war, and he will share the eulogy that he wrote for that. We also have Brian and one of our other high school history teachers, Andy Van Horn, who are going to do a veterans panel. So we've been working with Joe LeBlanc from the Veterans Administration, and we have some veterans that are gonna talk about their experience. We're gonna have some pieces from um, Brian's History Lab relative to World War I available during that as well. Um, and there's a woman in Newburyport who saw a monument up there on a young man named Eben Bradbury. So she has done a lot of research and she's gonna be presenting one night. She wrote a book about him. So again, in his footsteps. Um, we have kind of a fun event at the gym, the field house, I still call it the gym, um, one day and it's Small Planet Dancers. So they're gonna reenact a USO event with um, music, um, actual you know, clothing from the time and tell some stories. So all these events are also free. Um, in the schools, our elementary librarians are um, explaining to all the kids, pre-K through um, five, the meaning of poppies in terms of veterans um, and war. And they are then going to read certain picture books. There's a book about a World War I true hero called Rags, a dog. Um, Winnie the Pooh was actually a bear from World War I, so they're gonna share that story. Um, and then there's a book um, called Christmas in the Trenches, which we will share about the truce um, across all the grades. Along with the elementary librarians explaining the meaning of poppies, all the art teachers in the elementary schools are making poppies. <laughs> so they're different, taking different forms, and there will be about 2,200 poppies um, installed at Stevens Memorial Library. So that would be a really cool exhibit there from all of our kids. We also have one of our middle school art teachers, Sarah Tompkins, who's going to do some poppies and a big banner that will be um, hopefully part of the parade. Some kids can carry that banner, um, but will also be at the library. And after the parade, the library will be open as a comfort station and we, people will be able to see that whole installation. Um, we also have some kids from Thompson and Kittredge, some kids that sing, um, that are going to be in the parade and will be at the library at the end of the parade to sing for people before they move on to the VFW. Um, and then we have, um, a uh, speaker who's coming in, um, Don Mullen from Hope Initiatives International. He's an Irish journalist, author, filmmaker, um, humanitarian, and activist, and he is working on a UNESCO World Heritage Site um, between Belgium and France, where in memory of the truce. So he's going to come speak to our high school students, and he will be available to speak to the community that night. And he has won all kinds of awards. If you um, Google him, and we have information available, um, pretty interesting man. It should be pretty fascinating. So you have lots of cool activities. There's also um, 
what we're calling a passport project. So the in their footsteps is actually a term used by another group. They're letting us borrow it. Um, this gentleman, Ryan, um, I'm going to say his last name right, Haig, he's actually the person who puts together the whole Veterans Day Parade in New York City. He does this. So there will be a passport for middle, high school, and adults. So if there are four columns, you choose something from each column, get the passport stamped, which we will do, the library will do. Um, and you s hand that in, he will, you will get a special pin from their agency and a certificate. So and we are providing activities that will fill in all of those columns. And then there's also other service projects. There's a ho um, holiday cards for military. Um, that's on the website. That will be getting those cards by the end of the month of October. And then um, Christy Morley at the high school also does a service project. So there's lots of stuff up there. There's some cool videos some of our high schools have done in terms of research on um, veterans in the area. So those are going to be available. We just got the link today to get it up on the website. So lots of lots of really cool things. Will all this be collected in one place that we most, can? Most of this is in this handy brochure, which I will pass on to all of you, and we will have um, out in a number of places. It will be on the website, so Hillary will get connected with all of this. Great. The North Andover Reads website will be out there. We'll get it into um, all of the school's newsletters. So, but lots of cool activities. So. Is, is it true, Ms. Marks? I, I think I heard that there was a group of students at the high school that had the idea of going to the Holy Sepulchre Cemetery off Waverly Road to do a cleanup of all veterans' graves. They they were actually the youth center kids. Some of the oh, youth, youth center, center kids oh, went. Right. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I forget what it's called. Um, uh, step up. Step up. Is that it? Uh, I can't remember. I just saw it the other day. Um, it is something like a step up, I yeah. But it's like it's like a club that the the kids are doing and, and a group activity. It's have great. They, got it yet? they have. Yeah, they went. Yeah, last they tweeted Thursday, it. Yeah. I think it was step up. I think it's step up. I feel like that's something what it is. Like yeah. That. It's on Twitter. Come on. That's hey, where I, I was. <laughs> hoping to go. I actually have an uncle that's a World War II veteran buried there, and I was. Yeah, I, that was I showed up, but I showed up a week early. Okay. <laughs> I texted Greg. I said, "Don't come. On no room. one's here." <laughs> so. So thank you. Hope you can make it to some of the events. Yeah. That's it. Nothing else, guys? No, you're good. Okay, quick chairs report. Um, Dr. Glenn alluded to, to um, NISAC coming to the high school on Sunday. We have a scheduled meeting at 2 o'clock, so we had a post for that. I think everyone more or less will be there. I cannot make it. I said more or less. <laughs> I'm a less. <laughs> <laughs> um, another thing I mentioned uh, at our previous meeting was I'm going to reach out to the town manager to start talking about some of our long-term needs, our capital needs. Um, we're, we're changing a couple of dates right now, but that's in the works hopefully for next week. And uh, I think at the next meeting, I'll have an update on that end. So that's all I have on my, my uh, chair's report. So old business, second reading of um, DECA trip to Boston and Nashville. Anything on this? Uh, Dr. Gilligan, this is pretty this much. Is the one that we, uh, we talked about last time. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, um, so can I have a motion to approve it? Okay. I'm, are we doing them uh, together? Or is I'm looking for it right now. Are they, are they presented as one or two in here? They're, uh, one. they're on one. So let's do it as one then. How's that okay. sound? So I'll move that we uh, approve as presented in the packet the DECA trip proposals for Boston and Nashville competitions. We hear a second. Second. AM, AM. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on them? I think we talked about them quite a bit last time. No? No, no discussion? Um, okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. no. The ayes have it. Okay. 5 0. Okay. New business. Um, if I hear no objection, I think I'd like to take uh, B out of order. If that's okay? Yes. Yep. And let these guys go next so they can get home with a reason. Yes. Oh, very kind of you. So we'll take a first reading uh, high school overnight trip for track competition to New York. Um, do you want to say anything, Andrew, first? Or? I, I'm going to uh, excuse myself from the uh, discussion because my son will be going on the trip if it's a pass. <laughs> if it's a pass. <laughs> so. um, are you going to recuse yourself completely, like leave, it, leave the... No, no, I'm just I'm not going to vote. <laughs> Okay, oh, so you got abstained. So you're not oh, refusing. Abstained. Okay, that's fine. Then. Okay. Right. Um, okay, let's get out of that. Do you want to start this? Or? Sure. Yeah. Um, as you'll see uh, on the note, um, there will be, there's a, re a request to suspend the rules as a result of it coming up. Um, 
initially, um, you know, in the past, we've had some events, not necessarily MI2A sanctioned, but not necessarily in cross country, and, and winter track and outdoor track, and uh, it raised some good questions. Uh, so we put it on as a school event. Mr. Mealy will be working for the high school uh, before winter track season and spring track season, so that we're all in line with those components. And I'd like to introduce Coach Varney and his folks to come on up uh, to talk about the trip. And um, uh, assistant coach uh, Varney, I've been with the program for three years. Just nice. for the microphone. <laughs> we can hear you fine. The people at home are just. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, 2008, I started the North Andover Youth Track uh, Program, which a lot of these kids have gone through, and many of, of yours as well. Uh, we're averaging about 400 children a year through that program. Um, in that 10 years, the spring and fall and in, in, uh, winter track uh, has experienced a lot of championships. High attendance, we have about 100 uh, boys and girls per season for spring and uh, winter track. Uh, the fall, we have about 60 boys participating and almost 30 girls. So the growth of, of track as a activity within the high school and middle school has become, in my opinion, a significant part of the culture. Um, hats off to the band. Most of the band kids are, there's a lot of pieces of the band in our uh, track uh, family as well. Uh, so really the initiative here uh, is the Manhattan Invitational is a very significant meet. It is the oldest and largest high school cross-country meet in the country. And I think the way our program has kind of developed, you know, I think of uh, when I talk to Coach Nugent and Coach Delakai, we're trying to build a program of excellence um, that is really family-oriented and uh, inclusive. And part of that experience is really you know, making memories for kids, you know, positive memories that they kind of take with their, uh, with themselves as they go into the world. And uh, with that, I just want to kind of introduce the captains because I want you to hear from them as well. Um, but I'll talk about the meet. The meet is October 12th. It's, uh, it's an overnight, it's a business trip. We're not there for pleasure. Uh, the attempt is to get down there Friday, avoid heavy traffic, but also get the kids over the course and then the, the races run, think about 10,000 people in Van Cortlandt Park, racing from about 8.30 to about 4 that day. Uh, so there's a lot of activity, but our mission really is to get down there, prepare and race and come home. Um, it's, not, it's not nothing more, nothing less. We have a high chaperone to uh, athlete ratio. We hope to bring 27. We have a couple that are hurt, so it may be as few as 24 competing, and we have uh, right now at minimum 18 uh, parents that are attending to uh, the, the uh, meet. Um, we're intending to manage all the costs ourselves. Uh, we did get a donation um, from North Andover Youth Track uh, Club uh, to help defray the entry fees. Uh, most of the parents are picking up uh, the hotel fee for the one evening and then with that, um, uh, the captains have organized some fundraising with uh, the generosity of Stachis. Um, I'd like to introduce the captains from left to right, just so you have a feel for them. Hi, I'm Lauren O'Connell. I'm a senior at the high school and one of the captains. Um, I would really love to go on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> I recently committed to St. Anselm College for running, and I told my, my new coach that I would be going there. So I'd really like to go. <laughs> you would like to see my time since it's a college course. So it's a really good opportunity for kids who have committed and kids who are looking to be scouted to actually run on a college level course. Uh, my name is Chris Brady. I'm a senior at the high school and I'm on the cross country team. And um... <laughs> so Manhattanville is as Coach Varney touched upon, kind of a special meet. It's uh, pretty prestigious. And um, as we've also touched upon, both the boys and the girls program are on pace for pretty historic seasons in terms of since we've drawn the NBC, our record, hopefully our placement at the state and potentially all state meet. But uh, <laughs> besides that, I think um, since we really have something special here, we're hoping that maybe in we could sort of, I guess, showcase 
what we've built, sort of strut our stuff, strut our stuff on honestly a national level because the girls team is uh, ranked statewide and I, we, we just have a really good program and I think it's a special opportunity to go to Manhattanville. I can't think of something more fun than sleep, staying in New York, going to cross country meet the next day, personally. <laughs> um, my name's Caitlin Hastings. I've been on the team for four years and th we've always had talks about thinking about this meet and we've seen local other teams like in the NBC that have gone to this meet and um, it's always been something that we're always like kind of jealous of so scrolling through Twitter seeing how other teams have done at it and it's also just such a great experience for either people underclassmen getting scouted like Lauren said um, or just the experience of being on such a historic course um, you can see professionals and college athletes and you compare your own times um, and it'd be a great experience. I'm Jet Sad. I have been on the co cross country team for three years. I played soccer one year and when I made the change to cross country I was a little like I don't know if this is for me but over the past three years I've completely decided it's for me. I'm going to look I'm looking to run in college and I've seen the program grow so much from my sophomore year to now, like just from the dynamic of the team to the amount of work we're putting in. We're putting in almost like 50% more miles a week. And as, as um, this program's grown, I also love to see that we're going to extend our branches to other meets because these meets, my sophomore year, I would never think we were going to because we are a smaller program. But as we've grown, we've had more talent and now we're looking to become one of the best teams in the MVC and this meets a great way to showcase our talent. Um, I'm Caleb Blitzer. Um, I've been on the team for three years and so I joined my sophomore year and something that really stuck with me through cross country was like the bonds you make with the people around you and how how much um, it's, it's it feels like a how much it feels like a family um, not just a team and I think um, the, trip down, the trip down to Manhattanville will just further that even more with just having such a tightly, new, uh, tightly knit group of people um, together and this experience that's shared um, that's totally unique, um, I think will just uh, elevate the team even more, not only physically, but as a uh, family. Um. So we need to suspend the rules to take the step. Usually when we uh, approve any item, we have a first reading um, so the public can hear it and then give us you know, two weeks. But in this case, since our next meeting is the 17th, it really wouldn't work for you folks. So um, our first order of business will be to uh, suspend uh, the first reading of this item and um, give it a second reading today as well. So could I have a motion to suspend the rules? So moved. Can I have a second? second. All right, we have a motion by Ms. Picard, second by Ms. Mabley, because we are suspending the rules. I think this requires a roll call. Any, I'm sorry, any further discussion on this? On suspending the rules? On suspending the rules. Okay. Uh, Ms. Lynch? Yes. Ms. Mabley? Yes. Ms. Yes. Picard, um, you are abstaining? I vote yes. So the vote is 401 to suspend the rules. Okay, now to the main issue of approving the... Um, the trip. So let's, um, can I get a motion to put it on the floor and then we can discuss it? I'll move that we approve the trip. Okay, moved by Ms. Lynch, second. I'll second. Second by Ms. Mabley. Okay, we have it on the table. Um, discuss. Do people have questions? Do you have a question you want to ask? I have a question. I have a comment. I think this is a great opportunity to take this program to the next level. I think it's fantastic. I'm a former cross country runner myself. My kids are runners, so um, I'm thrilled for you guys. Thank you. I live in this area, and so I've seen from the middle school all of a sudden a little pack of kids running down Third Street, and so I've seen it grow over the last several years just in my own neighborhood, and it's really impressive, and you should all be very proud of your dedication. It's a lot of work. Yeah, it's, um, I have a sophomore in college who ran when the program first got started, and I, my great memory of that was him doing hurdles and running in, Nor in Andover and stopping on the track to wave to us <laughs> and going back to his hurdles. Um, so it really is a great thing. And my brother is still best friends with his long distance running uh, teammate from high school. But I do have a question, um, Dr. Gilligan, with transportation by parental automobiles. Is that, um, can yes. you talk to that a little bit? Uh, certainly. Um, 
is part of the co-curricular and extracurricular activity student transportation and private vehicles parental <laughs> consent form release from liability and indemnity agreement it is a field trip form that we, the school has used has been reviewed by council um, to make sure we're in compliance with all of the district policies and um, it is something that the district has used in the past in terms of uh, parents transporting thank you and I have a, another question as well is this a high school group of kids that are going or is this the club group of kids that are going well since the school is not funding it we're representing it as a club but they're all it's the high school team yeah so I would just say that the, you know initially um, in the past we've had some clubs go and as a result of being a club because people go independently this particular rules this is somewhat of an enrichment opportunity that's unique yeah. to the sport um, Jim's working closely with the high school to find out the, how this works uh, with the nationals and indoor and outdoor, which we've been sending kids for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. yep. So I think it raises some good questions as a result of whether they're going, they were going to be a club team that ran and they went without school committee approval or they went uh, representing the school, uh, although typically it's been a club team, bringing it to this group now makes it a school event. Um, and that's why I invited Council Egan tonight if anyone had any questions. It really could have gone either way. Uh, Council Egan uh, slightly tipped it over in the favor of making it a school event uh, with coaches uh, participating with input on coaching. And so, that's one of the reasons that we needed to suspend the rules was because we we're kind of having this shift. So we would expect in future years that this would come, perfect. you know, earlier on. Yeah. So not, not a criticism, just understanding and helping the public and me <laughs> to understand more. So thank you. Okay. Any further questions, comments? Okay. All of them here say aye. Aye. Oh, aye. You're going to stand right. Um, so let, let's just call the roll. Ms. Lynch? Yes. Ms. Mabley? Yes. Ms. Picard? Yes. Ms. Tracy I and Upstand. Upstand. So that's another 401. It is passed. Good luck. Kick some butt. Congratulations. Look forward How old is the meet? Uh, it's about, this is the 46th year, but I mean, this is a meet where you can look back in programs. I just pulled one out in 2009. Uh, my young, uh, oldest son ran, and you know, there's like, it's littered with Olympians. So it's a good experience for the kids yeah my, my superintendent coach grew up in uh, the Bronx uh, originally and his son was a runner and he's 70 so I thought he was telling me today that he actually ran in this meet but it, it couldn't have been him if it's only 40 years. no this race is 46 years but they've been rest, running cross country yeah. in that for 100 years yeah. yeah so maybe he did run in he high school I'm sure he did um, yeah I'm sorry he did it drove by it yesterday yeah. <laughs> You're going to be a chaperone. Right, yes, I am. Thank you so much. Where is it? I would have voted differently. <laughs> and that. And Council Egan, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Madam Vice Chair. I am curious about um, voting and not voting when our own kids are involved in something. Is there any advice or um, something that we should be following on that? Because certainly, you know, there's a number of us who have had kids that have gone on trips. Sometimes we've voted, sometimes we haven't voted. I'm just curious about that. Totally respect what you've done, um, but I'm just wondering if there's something we should be aware of. Well, my own opinion is you, you can vote on this kind of stuff. If, as long as you're not financially benefiting from something we're voting on, that you, you can vote on. But I understand Mr. McDevitt's concern of, you know, appearance, and it's sure. up to each person. If it was an uh, official conflict of interest, you'd have to, Mr. McDevitt would have had to leave the room entirely and recuse himself from debate. Um, but I think just at our comfort level, he wanted to mm -hmm. abstain. So um, I, in the past, I've had to do it once and recuse myself and leave the room and not participate or discuss it. So um, only if you have a financial interest, really, uh, do you need to. Uh, a positive financial impact rather than. Uh, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> but you're <laughs> going to have to pay, right? <laughs> I guess <laughs> exactly how it goes. But no, I, I don't think um, technically he had to recuse himself, but he wanted to out of an abundance of caution, I think. Absolutely. All right. I just. Yeah, I, I would just say personally, I mean, um, there were only about 24, 27 kids that were going, uh, student athletes that were going. And so um, I, I just felt it was too small of a group. Uh, um, you know, if we were talking about uh, maybe a trip abroad or one of the other ones where it was really open to any student that was there, I, I would perhaps vote if my children were there. I mean, I know I have for um, 
nature's classroom, for example. Um, but that's for, you know, including everybody in, in the grade level. And this was just such a small group, I thought, you know, I didn't, and, I didn't and want and to tip the scale one way or the public. other. Yeah, no, that's Thanks. fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next order of business is uh, goals, I believe, right? Yeah. You have Superintendent School Committee goals, first reading. Yeah, so I, you know, two, two real big things. I had the opportunity to uh, you know, connect with the chair and the vice chair and very appreciative of their time. Um, I'd also like to mention that I'm really excited about coming back in November with a revised strategic plan. Um, some great advice from my coach and being part of the NISIP program was uh, originally last year being so gung-ho I thought I'd come back with a strategic plan in the spring, uh, but we needed time as a team over the summer at the retreat and fine-tuning this fall to come back um, in terms of all students' professional practice um, and consistent and rigorous curriculum. Uh, that said, I don't see those objectives changing, but some of those initiatives. And the reason I mentioned the strategic plan is just because uh, the strategic plan is so comprehensive and covers so many different areas of what we do, just because I don't have something in my superintendent goals, because you know, I'm tr trying to stay consistent with what uh, superintendents have done in the past. Um, that, that doesn't mean we're not working on those, because you'll see those in the strategic plan. And these particular goals, I, I talked to my coach, and I, I talked to the chair and the vice chair about a little bit of a kind of a risk uh, being, you know, uh, a superintendent, and, and some of you uh, have been on the committee for a while. Typically, the goals for superintendents are the same the first year they're in the NISIP program uh, that's partnered with the state. The second year goals are typically the same, and the third year goals are typically the same. So I wanted to stay true to the spirit of the program and stick with the goals that I needed to cover, but I also thought that it was an opportunity to really highlight a couple areas that you know I think are really important based on all the feedback from 1,136 people that participated in the entry plan, uh, as well as uh, input from the leadership team, teachers, etc. So the goals really focus around, and I didn't want to be presumptuous, as I mentioned last time, to say that I wanted to suggest the school committee goals. But uh, with their input and what we've kind of done in the past, um, we had uh, <coughs> some school committee goals, some shared goals, and some independent goals. Um, and we've done that now, I think, for five years or four years. And I think it makes a lot of sense. Um, so having said that, uh, the first goal is really around um, is your goal, and I think that's something you guys are always working on, is connecting, engaging with the community. Uh, and more importantly, I think the most important word in there is town leadership. Um, I think that I'm really excited with Melissa Murphy Rodriguez. I met with her for 90 minutes about a week ago or so, and I have my first meeting with her um, on a regular basis uh, starting next Tuesday. Uh, as David mentioned, I think he's reached out to have a meeting. Additionally, I'm also going to see if I can get the union presidents to have a 10-minute meet and greet with her. I always think that's a very good thing, particularly in a negotiation year. So I'm excited about that. Uh, the other shared, uh, then to shared goals, uh, the negotiations. Um, we have several contracts up this year. Um, just recently, um, the uh, Teachers Association uh, sent me a letter um, uh, to bargain. And that's just a procedural matter. I'm actually not sure if it's addressed to me or to the school committee itself, but um, I will check with Bev tomorrow so that we can take the steps. They're very much interested in uh, continuing with interest-based bargaining, something this would be the third year of it. Um, and Jim, what are the other contracts that are up this year? I, I, I know that the TAs are up, and I don't know how it's possible because we just settled the TAs, yes. but I know that that was retroactively. And are there any other ones? Mm -hmm. So David has it in his hand. I have more, yeah. Teachers have um, given us notice, as have the TAs, yep. um, that they wish to bargain. Uh, the next step will be for them to let us know when they'd like to start scheduling the sessions. Uh, usually it's more difficult for them to get who's going to be on their group. Um, so that's usually the process. And the administrative assistants are also uh, up this year as well. They're a year They're off. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mr. Mailey, thank you so much for providing the letter that I just referenced and was made out to the school committee. <laughs> and <laughs> Chair Teresa. Once, once to you, once to me. Oh, okay. I, okay. Um, which is outstanding. Um, you know, the additional piece is class size. If anyone has seen the most recent tax quarterly bill sent out by the community, um, I mentioned um, the plans um, as previously as a community we're somewhat committed to in terms of facilities master plan two, which was put on hold with the departure of Andrew Mailer, and that has to do with uh, additions at the Franklin School, the Atkinson School, and the Kittredge School. 
Um, and I'm pretty excited about continuing to work to decrease class size. You know, we have some pockets that are a little bit higher. You know, we have some fifth grades at 27, 28, but across the levels, uh, it, it's really impressive, um, the difference. I mean, it's just a, it's a difference maker. Um, I think if you notice in there, I also talk about the middle school. I mean, we have to do something with the middle school, I think. Um, you know, last year we talked about having discussion about how we proceed with the middle school. I know that um, there are a lot of supportive folks in the community that know, um, you know, it's something that we want to make progress on. Prior to Andrew Mailer's departure, we started to have a discussion about what that might look like. You know, how many times do we go for MSBA without getting it? What do other mechanisms look like? And in that newsletter, I mentioned the middle school, that we have to look at all the options um, for funding avenues or arrangements for the middle school. I think part of that will be us as an administrative team working with Jim Mealy um, and looking at some of our past facilities um, reviews of what we have of, you know, also exploring all sorts of options. You know, I don't want to, I'm, I fear saying some of them tonight so because uh, there's no endorsement of any of them um, and someone taking that and running with some information. Um, you know, that's not quite accurate, but I think we have to look at all the options on the table. You know, in addition at the middle school, self-funded, MSBA, ex you know, debt exclusion, whatever it is, part of a facilities master plan. Um, but more importantly, I think just like we did when we built North End of a High School in 2004, we have to look at all the options of being creative of different moves to different places. And, you know, how do we explore everything and put everything on the table? so that the public knows we've examined all these things um, and we're really out of space. And I, I would just say, I mean, we are close to out of space. Um, at the end of my street, um, Princeton Properties is, is getting ready to start opening and, and it's 192 apartments, one and two bedrooms. Um, I think not approved yet um, is a potential of 200 on High Street. Um, and I think there's another 200 um, kind of behind China Blossom. 136. 136, okay, so. Behind my house. Behind your house. Uh, so, I mean, we've got somewhere in the, you know, 500 apartments that are being built in addition to homes that are being built as well. So um, this is something that I think we have to be really in tune with um, from a planning and a, and a building perspective of, um, within the communities and, and the impact that it has on the schools as well. And, and I know that some of those won't be built, you know, for a year or two before they start to get some occupancy, um, but those children will be coming. Yeah, Andrew, so that's something we're very keenly aware of. It's something that we follow. Um, if I could just humor you for a second, yeah. Mr. Mealy, this is something Mr. Mealy explains very, I mean, follows very closely. <laughs> right, and, I know. And uh, Mr. Mealy, uh, if I could. Dr. Mealy. Dr. 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 Mealy. Sorry, Dr. Mealy. Doctor of enrollment projections. Yes. <laughs> but you also brought this up in front of the planning board. You, you, you were asked to come and discuss this at the planning board as well? I was, yes. yes. Um, so we do follow very closely, and um, it's interesting. I, I think you're right that we need to start planning, um, even though the new units going in are market rate and not a lot of three-bedroom units, one- and two-bedroom units, um, and their location. We wouldn't anticipate as many students as people think when they look at a 200-unit development. Um, but as those developments age, then you start to see mm -hmm. more students. Um, and that's what we really have to be aware of. And uh, the town's balance of trying to maintain a certain level of affordable housing, uh, the more you put in at market rate, the more you're now obligated to put in um, affordable as affordable. Um, so that will impact us as well. So you're absolutely right. We need to start planning for this. Yep. And um, I plan to pursue it as a, really a top priority, I think, with the support of the board and the, the chair. Mm -hmm. um, and as Jim said, you know, when we build market rate and then an affordable Chapter 40B housing comes in, they cancel each other out. You know, so we're not making progress. I think, what is it, Jim, in the Commonwealth? 10 percent? You know, and what are we at in North End? 8.7 or something like that? Right. Yeah. And there's other things online. For these units. Correct. Right. Does so th these units will just make our number go down um, less because they're, they're market rate. They're not affordable. Right. Correct. Right. But do they recalculate that like every five years or something? There's a funny way that they do that, if memory serves. I'm not sure how often they recalculate okay. that. There's a comprehensive... We've been around that same number for a long time, yeah. you know? There's a okay. comprehensive report online uh, on the town side 
about uh, affordable housing, et cetera. It's very lengthy, but it was very informative. I've read it. And more importantly, you know, we do, I do know for a fact that we have one complex in town that I've heard rumors about that's up in the air on 114, and none of that counts as affordable housing, yet we have a very a large population of Title I students that live there. Um, so, yeah, um, I think that's interesting. And, you know, it, this is something we've been monitoring. You know, we were very keeping an eye on Berry Street. You know, and in the last, I mean, this last school, for this coming school year, we're down 51 students as compared to the year before. So we keep an eye on it. We watch the trends. Um, that being said, after that October 1 enrollment, schools like Thompson and Atkinson often see a lot of movement. Absolutely. So, um, yeah. On this topic, I just ask one of the questions. So, when we were exploring the Ann Bradstreet option, right, along with that came the we need to renovate Kittredge, Franklin needs. And Atkinson, yeah. and Atkinson. And Atkinson. When we all agreed to build Ann Bradstreet, did we agree that those things are now in the pipeline, or do they have to be reintroduced on a new master plan? Like, are those already a done set deal, mm -hmm. or do they have to be negotiated? And, and how does that fit into the order of events? I think, from my perspective, it's something that is on a top priority when I meet with the town manager um, in the next week or so. Because obviously, we had that kind of commitment with the former town manager. Right. And I think, um, like three you know, years ago. So. Yeah. And I think we sold, sold it to the town like that as well. Right. That's you know? why so I, I think it's good important to for us to talk really about that. Back on that. Right. Right. But I also want to throw in the fact that if we strike out again with MSBA for the middle school, you know, is that more of a priority? And is right. there, there a way to, it's nothing set in stone. That's the bottom line. But you we know? have to work all those things as. Exactly. Exactly, Our and I week. think one of the one of the things that the new town manager will have to deal with, and by the way, she has a, a meet the, the town manager open house on on Monday at six at town hall. If people want to go by, mm -hmm. by that, yeah. six p.m. Yeah, yeah, six p.m. School folks are <laughs> okay. Um, I lost a train of thought there, but it, it, it's something that I want to bring up with her, and you know, tell what our expectations are and what we think our needs are going to be in the long term, and how you know we're going to push that agenda along. Just Thank as a, a reminder as well, um, in preparing the capital improvement plan for the last couple of years, we were asked by the town manager to not have them on there because that's the expectation was that that's, that's known as what we need in the school department as part of facilities master plan phase two. I think the fire station has already been talked about, but everyone was in agreement that that's the list going in. I want to see it like written down. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> Nothing is set in stone, so obviously town meeting, uh, right. yes, and the finance right. unit. But yeah, I mean, listen, we've had a, a great collaborative relationship. For, I've been on here for five years. You've been on for seven now, I guess. Longer. Mm -hmm. Longer than that? <laughs> I don't know. Seems like yesterday. Right. Um, I want to maintain that that collaborative nature, and I, I think I have every expectation that's going to remain the case with the new town manager. And after that first meeting, uh, Mr. Chair, I would say that. I, I have very much have a feeling that that will be the case, and if you get a chance to read that town tax letter um, with our quarterly update, um, I talk about what's been achieved through collaboration and how we expect that to go forward with the mention of what has somewhat been uh, tentatively committed or planned in terms of facilities too. Yep. So um, certainly that's something we're keeping an eye on, uh, direction setting and strategic planning. Um, this would be just the revisions and oh, yeah, the updates that will come through in November. Um, something that still continues to need work, you know, in my opinion, and I want to continue to work on it with our leadership team, is fair and effective evaluation. I think that we are probably one of the best districts in the, in the region for uh, instructional rounds, um, and we've gotten really good at it. Uh, but through collaboration with Ms. Marks, Dr. Mealy, uh, our leadership team, we still want to involve teachers, uh, the union, all the different folks in these rounds. But this year we're going to, we're working on some uh, rounds that might be slightly different, that we look at the perspective of those rounds, looking at through a lens of if I was an EL student in this class, mm -hmm. if I was um, a special education student in this class. And I think to look at those perspectives may give us an opportunity to say, are we meeting those best practices in those areas? because we've gotten really good at the traditional engagement and some of those other things, not that we're not still looking at those, but I think that this is really part of, um, you know, the equity squad that was newly formed last year for the first time in North End of History, 
Uh, Ms. Marks is chairing um, and going to the state this week for training, um, or the team is going um, around, you know, what are the best practices with such a diverse group of folks. So I'm pretty excited about that. The PD offerings, you know, that's not just PD, that's on board, you know, that ties into human resources, onboarding of new folks. We took survey data every year of the new teachers and what they need, and as a result, we made some changes this year. But it's also about having offerings that meet the needs of teachers. You know, it, was a, it wasn't very long ago, I remember, you know, when I was a principal. If it was a, you know, elementary training in math, then everyone went to math and did that if you were the PE teacher, or the, mm. um, you know, and we've made significant gains where we have differentiated PD. And we want to expand upon that because we also realize besides different content areas and different things people need, uh, people in different stages of their career need different things too. And there's also going to be a big focus on the SEL component of um, what takes place in the classroom. So uh, we're pretty excited about that. And um, you know, also with partnerships, uh, we continue to work you know, um, on some partnerships with some folks. And then uh, last but not least, I really have to give credit to uh, Dr. Mitch Conley out of, I think it's Weston or Wellesley, I always get the W's confused, um, is a new superintendent. Um, she had a goal, so I do want to credit her um, that I, the spirit of the goal is similar, um, that you know, building a leadership team. There's been significant change. I think one of the biggest challenges um, is a district that we're looking at is really taking a look at all of our programs, particularly on special education, um, and looking at what are the cohorts we have, what's the population we have, what are those trends we have, and how do we best service those kids? Um, because we've had a lot of turnover in the area of special education and different leadership positions over the last two years. And if anyone has recently um, seen the Tribune, uh, Paul Tennant wrote a nice article um, about all the new leadership changes uh, in the district with you know, new principal at Atkinson, new principal at the Brad Street, um, new assistant principal at the Franklin and the Sargent, mm -hmm. uh, new special education director, new HR director, new uh, coordinator of special education at North End of High School. Um, so it's really an opportunity for us to build a team that puts the right people in the seats on the bus and we're really thinking creatively and outside the box. It's not so much about what they traditionally did in that position, it's about where we need to go and what people's skill sets are. And we've started to make those adjustments and we'll have more recommendations um, as part of the strategic plan around um, elementary and middle school leadership. Uh, Jim's been running the committee for a couple of years. Um, so that was goal seven. Um, and, you know, um, I'm pretty excited to really um, be the superintendent in North Andover and have a second year and have a chance to do these things. Thank you, Dr. Gillen. Um, this is obviously a fresh reading, but can we, um, are there things that jump out that we want um, to address, change, edit, um, in advance? People have any suggestions right now? So I, I really, um, I didn't see this when I looked at the packet before, but if we have things, should we get them to you? Um, for our for ours specifically, yeah, I think get them to us or, I okay. mean, the reality is, I think if you're going to edit this, changes, we're going to obviously debate it next time. But uh, yeah, just a heads up, the okay. if there are there major changes, okay. you know, I think it's important that we kind of, um, you know, okay. get some edits. All right. Um, I have a question on our goal, which is um, it suggests that we attend school council meetings, which I'm fully in favor of. I wonder where we find the dates for those. We can check. Sparks, I know that we've been having some school council meetings. Because each school has a school council. Yeah, right. so, so is it on their PTO? Is it on their? Uh, there's a lot of different calendars. Yeah. But out the there. principals set those meetings up, so I can certainly get those dates for you for each of the schools. I mean, they should be available to the public, right? I mean, they are. They're they open should be. Meetings. They may be on that calendar. I don't know if those are all posted yet, though. It's a it's a huge tool. Um, yes, I know. And I know it's super complicated, but Where is that th I think that's a really a really great thing. I'm pleased that we finally have those in all schools. Mm. Yeah, that's been a oh, okay. that school committee goal for quite some time. Second vote. The first one. Yeah. Um, and I would just say again, just because something's not on here doesn't mean we're not going to address it. We just can't pot. As a superintendent, we've, we've had long had talks over the years about um, 
having focused goals because the strategic plan is going to have other goals. I mean, we have, you know, for example, a big area of the strategic plan that we'll be looking to work on is 504s and looking at having a group assess, make recommendations, what are we doing in the short term, what are we doing in the long term, things of that nature. So, and I know these are broader categories, but I think they hit the mark. And I think hopefully, um, you know, not de deviating slightly from the NISP second year goals, I, I think was, um, in my, my humble opinion, and talking with my coach, I think it's probably what's best. So, so on, on goal number six, um, I also wonder, um, under the benchmarks, it says calendar on all PD offerings. Does that include the building level offerings or just the district level offerings? So this is the first year that we actually have everything planned out for the entire year. Um, we Brilliant. Do, we, do, mm -hmm. we do the elementary piece, the principals and the building administrators in the middle school and the high school do their own. So we have everything plotted out for the elementary, um, which is on a calendar that's available to anybody to see. Um, so that, that is all there. Yeah, because I, I know that f some families have been interested, especially on the early release days, mm -hmm. about what's happening in the building, what's mm -hmm. really happening there. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that transparency is really helpful yeah. to families to, you know, because they're experiencing an, an inconvenience. I mean, they value it, um, but they can value it most when they know, mm -hmm. you know, a little what's going on. And in the past, we've had um, kind of some updates. Um, you know, a couple times of just, you know, some things that have happened. Um, and, you know, I think if we continue to do that, I think it really kind of drives home to families, you know, what's happening and, and the, uh, the, the benefits and the, you know, the presentations. And I know we tweet some of that stuff and, and things are in the newsletters, but, you know, that, that's a great place to just kind of put that out in the forum. So. Yeah, and I think uh, just about every year or close to it, there's an, it's been a great opportunity where um, we have a tremendous assistant superintendent where I think it's been a real uh, upgrade in that position. Uh, but the assistant superintendent usually... The bar, the bar was set pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> I would say that I, I know that the previous assistant superintendent had the same questions as they come up from time to time and we've devoted an entire article about yes. what happens on these days. Right. And I think we'll have the opportunity. And I, I can give you a, just a quick overview. This year, actually, all of the elementary PD is building-based. So based on teacher feedback and new curriculum that we're working on, um, we have ST math trainings because we have schools. Some schools are year one ST math. Some schools are year two. So it will be based on that. Um, we are using mystery science in the, si in the science classrooms. So there is science training going, going on in every school. And then there is a lot of social, emotional, and behavioral um, focus. So right now, um, for um, one of our first priorities. So the people who are doing those trainings rotate amongst the six schools. So we had um, some behavioral training um, at ABEC this last time, and then we have it going on at Kittredge and Thompson in particular because we have SEL programs there. So the needs in those schools are a little higher in terms of that immediate training um, than maybe at some of the other schools. So that's what's rotating through. Um, Terrific. So. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I just came from the open house over at Kittredge in the second Miss Kelly's class. She did a nice video on the ST math. Great. Some of the behavioral stuff. Good. I think it'd stick around for the third grade one. But um, yeah, it was pretty well attended. So I think if if, all, if the teachers are having those open houses um, and they present the same amount of information, it was very easy to comprehend. She had a YouTube video about it. So yeah. Good. Good. And then again, just a reminder, we have those parent information sessions morning or afternoon for both the literacy and the math. So if people are curious, um, have specific questions, we have our staff here that can answer those. So. Thanks. Okay, any further questions on the goals for now? No? Okay, so that's just the first reading. Moving over to first reading of Overnight service trip Arizona and New Mexico. It, it, that is I, here. I, so. This is not a misprint. Um, what's the year on that, Ms. Marcus? No, this is not a misprint. Yeah. So it is not for this year. It is for 2021. Um, yeah. And part of the purpose in that is to see what students might be interested in and allow them time to um, work and make the money for the trip. Yeah. So. And in the spirit of getting things early. That's early. So, I appreciate that, but we're not going to approve anything until they decide to do this, right? 
Are, are we are we just gonna? I'm not doing. We're not proving anything tonight, obviously. But what's the? Do you expect this to be on the agenda for next next time around? Uh, let me just. Uh, I'm just. Can I just say my packets? <laughs> That's right. No, no. I'm, I'm not very tough on my packet today. For it, unless we've said it's a done, it's a, it's a go. So, if 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 they want to go for 2021, we should be discussing it right. and deciding, so that they can put it out there. And you know, well, maybe, they, maybe they won't get enough interest, but maybe we'll get. Is this it right here? Am I missing something? It's uh, right here, David. It's, it's about four from the back. Okay. Right All right. Sorry about that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that came up at um, school committee meeting in the late spring last year was more trips that were not international. Right. Mm -hmm. So this is a domestic trip. Right. So. I was going to comment. I appreciate that. Yeah. So d d does the the mem do the members feel like it might be beneficial for Miss Morley to come in and, and talk about this? Um, are we going to have some serious questions about? Doing it because I'm sure she could probably answer these questions a lot better than a lot better than um, you know you, you folks are going to be able to. Perhaps, uh, Mr. Chair, um, you know I think that it's on here, so it get approved at some point. But I think if it, if it you know, went, if we had Miss Morley commented, she couldn't come to the next meeting because of whatever commitments. Sure. I, I don't think waiting that extra yeah. month mm -hmm. is going. I, th to I think that would be beneficial. This is a you know some of the trips. We do the deck of stuff we do all the time, some of the band stuff we do all the time. But maybe you can check her availability on the next, um, over the next couple of meetings and just have her come in and, you know. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and it's also yeah, something. That. Yeah, Miss Marks has been working with her. So it's also one of those things I think that you know, we have to decide. Like, we are trying to be proactive to be early, and I think this is probably the earliest we're going to propose yeah. <laughs> yeah. anything. So it's a little bit of a shock to the system because I do, when you said it, I was thinking, well, we're going to prove something for two years out, but you know we don't. They don't want to gauge interest and and see the right. component, because in the past, if you think about it, like you know, you might have been under pressure with a time constraint, and I just yep. So. Okay. Comment. I would again like this is a really exciting trip. I'm sure that we're going to be excited about learning about it, but it's also a trip that costs almost three thousand dollars, and you know what, what actions can we take to see that there are closer more affordable trips um, for students I know we can, I mean these are volunteer activities for the teachers I get that so you know going out there and doing something that's interesting to them is, is an important component but just if you can keep pushing that message back out there that local affordable yeah and I do know that mr. Jackson has mentioned that I'm not uh, we had talked about it so um, we can perhaps speak with him and see what other local trips. I think there's some even maybe in Massachusetts and New England. Well, and we and we may not know about them because if they're if they're local, they may not be overnight. Yeah. Right. So I mean, yeah. they could be happening. We would love right. to have reports back on that if that's the case. And this might be an awesome opportunity for Ms. Morley to talk also about Lilith. So. Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you. Okay. Um, first room pro proposed revisions to educator. Do you guys cover this when I was gone, by the way? No. This one? Okay. No, we didn't do this yet. You, you just announced it. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. So, what are we looking to do? Ms. Picard, do you want to take the lead on this? I defer to Ms. Mabley, who is oh, our wow. policy person. So, the wonder um, ball. As Ms. Picard talked about, and you did miss it, when we, we did have a committee of five, I was one of the members who went over our Educator Hall of Fame nominees. And during that discussion, we also discussed the process. And so if you look at it, we used to have it that we opened the nominations by April 1st. No, yes, April 30th or something. I, can't, I just crossed off here. Yeah, I think it was April 30th. Yeah, it used to be, they, it opened on April 1st. It closed June 30th. In the, and it's the vice chair who's in charge to set up the committee. But then the vice chair changes right in this window. The Educator Hall of Fame thing, the, that event, is in October, and it generates a lot of excitement. It's wonderful. We celebrate these people. But then the nominations don't open until April 1st. So you lose all this momentum of people saying, I've got to nominate so-and-so. And so we felt, why do we have to open and close the nomination in a 60-day window? So why can't it be open until, what we're proposing here, they have to turn them in by April 30th? So you could nominate someone today 
for next year all the way up until April 30th. And then the standing vice chair, which would be <laughs> Ms. Picard again this year, <laughs> would then have time to convene the committee and um, make the decision and all of that before we reconstitute the board and um, take advantage of the momentum that the celebration in October generates. Additionally, it's super hard to get a group of people together in the summer. Between June 30th and probably September, right? I mean, all the teachers are scattershot. And, um, so it's, it's so, a better time frame. So the, the proposed, this is just basically proposing shifting the time frame a little bit, opening it up to a longer window. We can still remind people that it's an opportunity, but we didn't want to, um, the timing just was awkward. Well, first of all, I, I think it's great that we recognize the Hall of Fame uh, inductee at the same time we are honoring people who just got professional teacher status. I like right. that. It's a nice, it's a nice contrast where we're congratulating someone who served the town very well and we're welcoming and all these new teachers. So I like that part of it. I'm just wondering, do we need that much time? I mean, how like how much work and effort goes into like just say that that we wait till September? Could you get that done? in that like September 1st through, because I, I agree with you, over the summer people go their right. scatterways, they lose interest, whatever. Could you do it in that September 1st through October 10th window? I, I'm just spitballing yeah. right now. So, can I respond yes. to that? So I think one of the things is that, um, you know, this is a pretty exciting honor and people may have folks that don't live immediately in the area who may want to make plans to, to join them. So if we were to decide in the springtime, um, families could say, hey, you know, your dad, your mom, your grandfather, whoever um, is going to be recognized in October. Can you, you know, look at making a trip out here? So it would give families um, lead time to, to bring in the important people um, rather than only just a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. So you would actually make your decision that in June, that farther? Uh, yeah. In June for recognition in October. It was also suggested that the um, Hall of Fame inductees um, be given five minutes at the beginning of the opening of school um, gathering, so before the keynote speaker to you know talk for five minutes about you know their experience in North Andover. When Dr. Gilligan does the thirty, how many people have been teaching for how many years? You know, in that window of celebration is, is where Dr. it came up. Oh, Dr. Miller's now the MC. Yes, I beg your pardon. But saying that that was it. such a that's such a special time and all the teachers are there and th you know these people are inspiring to teachers as well. So, so that would give them you know another opportunity to have a few to, words um, in be a recognized. Group. Certainly something we could consider, providing that um, it seemed like it would fit and they right. were um, alive and willing. Right. But that's but this, that the main reason for this these small changes were just to basically. No, I understand the, the rational pattern. I just right. wonder, does it lose? If you if you if we pick somebody that early, um, does it lose its pizzazz? You know, you just obviously just announced it today. Who right. won? And in three weeks, we're going to celebrate that person. Right. Um, you know, there's that momentum there. I just wonder if we announce it in June, for example, then you have the summer, and you know. Well, we can know. still let them know in June, and then we can announce it in September, and nobody would know the difference. Uh, the most important thing is we want to generate more applications, more nominations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and if, it could take time. I mean, we did have at one point when we first started this, we had six or seven oh, yeah. nominees. So then that could take some time. We've had fewer nominees these last couple of years. Um, we're trying to So we're trying to, that. you know, okay. boost that again. And as people on this committee have said many times, it is an honor to be nominated. Um, and to share these stories and to hear these stories is really mm -hmm. an important part. So the folks nominated, though, if I just recall, yeah. they don't go public. It's only the people selected. Correct. Right. Correct. Correct. Okay. And what we changed the last time was to keep the, the, the all the nominations, maybe who weren't selected, stay in the pool for right. future potential. Right. Because I think before that they had to um, resubmit. Resubmit. And we don't I mean, want to make them do that. It, this process changed an awful lot because it used to be basically the, the vice chair picked. Right. I mean, it was literally kind of like everything went to, and then you kind of got to the point of the meeting, and you were like, um, it's, it's going to be Kathy. You know? <laughs> and everyone was like, well. Right. <laughs> so. Thank you. Okay.
Okay. So that's the first main reading. reasons. I, I would just offer this. Uh, mm -hmm. I do know um, of a group I've met with once. It's kind of an informal alumni group of teachers that go out once a month to breakfast at, um, I think it's called Al's Dinah. It's in Methuen. Yes, it is. Way. Yes, it is. Um, mm -hmm. And they range uh, across a lot of levels, but most of them taught in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and some into the 2000s. If uh, I oh, I would love to go. I always, forget, to I always forget who's in charge. Um, <laughs> Stan will go. Uh, That's right. <laughs> no, but I'd be, well, it's not the airport. So, um, but I'm saying if you wanted to come and, uh, you know, they spread the word. And in fact, um, what happened a couple years ago is one of the people that nominated it then wasn't in the loop with the, the superintendent's newsletter. So they didn't, they nominated but didn't go to the event because they didn't have the time. Yeah. So the last two years, I think, or last year, um, I sent a message out to kind of the head honchos of the group that organized this breakfast, and they spread the word. It spreads like wildfire with them. So if someone would like to go and just explain the process, I think it would be awesome. And uh, Okay. Get a lot more nominations. Yeah. Here yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think you just explaining, I think there's a perception, even though when I had talked to a couple of them before, that... You know, if one year it was elementary, then it, the, you know, or if it was high school one year, then it couldn't be high school the next. Even though you explain it to them, they, they just think that it might be kind of an unwritten rule of oh, we're going to do one at each level each year. And, you know, I think just explaining it. Well, and now we can do two. Like, we used to only be able to do one. So being able to do right. two yep. you know, cha might change that as well. Yeah, so I'm happy to do it. I think the same group meets at the nines on Friday night, so that might be a little more entertaining. I go to bed at 9 on Friday nights. <laughs> go to the 9s. Oh, oh the nines. I see. Okay. I was like, the 99s. Oh, I can't do that. <laughs> Anyways. Great. Okay, great. Okay, uh, public comment. Anyone? Yes. Come to the microphone and please state your name and address, please. Carl Bissering, 30 Ann Road. So I uh, wanted to talk about the trip that you were just speaking of. Um, I agree and think it is extremely expensive, and I think the primary reason for that is because it's an EF Tours trip. So this is uh, two pages off of their website that documents their rewards program, all of which are illegal in this state and most others. In fact, I don't know of any states that are, it's not illegal. But uh, they give away thousands of dollars, electronics, free trips, all kinds of things, things that I know our teachers have been given. Um, and I found that out through a phone call with, uh, with their representatives. Uh, so I think if the trips were done any other way, that they would be, well, I know they would be cheaper. Um, I took a trip that my daughter went on priced the same trip, and we could have taken our entire family for that same price and done the exact same trip if it wasn't through EF Tours. So I think staying away from them is, a, is something that we really should consider. Um, there's a, this, this is a, an article from the San Diego Union Tribune where they basically researched and found out the same information um, they go on, they say things like, you know, EF Educational Tours, which proclaims itself number one educational tour on its website, offers teacher incentives such as cash, electronics, exotic trips like Tucson Spa Week, ancient Peru, and Machu Picchu. And those trips are specifically related to the San Diego School District and the things that were being rewarded to their teachers. Um, none of the teachers would respond uh, to, to anyone. But uh, the critics said that the incentives could create a conflict of interest for teachers who they said essentially become sales agents for the private companies. And that's exactly how I feel it happened with me and my daughter. Uh, she was anonymously awarded the opportunity to go on this trip. This was to a country that had nothing to do with the language that she spoke, had nothing to do with any course she was in, and she was anonymously awarded the opportunity. Um, and once signed up, they're like a dog with a bone. They don't let go. Um, really, 
reprehensible business practices. A $100 charge to change the payment mechanism to cash. So I, I think it really would be, uh, you know, especially since this trip is so far out, to uh, consider um, another tour provider and do it a different way. Um, if you take the, the $2,700, they book these, they book the flights for these trips, you know, almost a half a year in advance, typically. And so they get business group rates, which are extremely cheap. Um, you know, a reasonable rate for, for this, that trip would be $400, leaving $2,300 for the six days left on the tour. That's a lot of money to spend per day basically tr tromping around or, and attending museums usually for free. So, um, and then uh, their lodging, you know, the lodging is always cheap because they're usually two or four to a room or more. Um, so there's, there's no real expenses there, and I don't think these kids are eating at five, six-star restaurants and they're not drinking alcohol. So um, food prices are cheap, but at $383 a day, I don't know, you know, what they could be spending it on. Uh, Thanks, Carl. That's three minutes. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. Okay. Any other public comment tonight? Yeah. Anything from the members tonight? I do. Ms. Lynch. Um, so at the liaison to NAPAC, they had their first meeting a couple weeks ago. Um, they have a new chair. Courtney Pham is the new chair. She sounds, she's very energetic and um, enthusiastic about taking over, which is great. Um, Sign-ups for understanding our differences went out today. So if you have a chance to volunteer, it's a great program. Um, teaching kids in the elementary schools about different abilities and learning styles and differences. Um, so you can go to northandoverpack at gmail.com. And there's a Facebook page, too, with a link to sign up there if you'd like to volunteer and then their next meeting is actually tomorrow at 9 a.m. at Sargent School which was originally scheduled there to coincide with the fun run which I believe has now been rescheduled <laughs> but NAPAC is still meeting at 9 o'clock tomorrow. And you don't have to be a parent of a student to be a volunteer for understanding our differences. You don't even have to be a parent. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> you do need a Tory. Yes. Yep. Thanks, Holly. Yep. Andrew? Uh, so just very quickly, um, uh, I'm going to send out uh, with Bev uh, tomorrow, but the fundraising uh, subcommittee should be meeting on October 10th, um, I believe at 2.30. Uh, we will be at the uh, North Andover High School Library. Um, and so uh, we've gathered a lot of information over the course of the summer with coaches um, and uh, just uh, some of the reports that we have. And so we'll be looking forward to uh, starting to run through some recommendations. So. Taking Any, longer than I thought, I bet. but it's a tough uh, issue. It's a tough there's issue. a lot. Uh, there's a lot of fundraising and a lot of digging in that our students uh, and student athletes and uh, the participants in, in band and drama mm -hmm. um, are, are certainly doing. Do you anticipate getting some to us this calendar year? Uh, my goal would be to definitely be putting something uh, before the budget season and uh, teacher negotiations. Wow. So. Okay. Thank you. That would be my Look recommendation. For, uh, you're, running the, you're running the <laughs> subcommittee. <laughs> Ms. Avery? Uh, just a quick thing that um, sounds like all the new things are starting up. So we had our first, um, I'm a the liaison to the PTO president's meeting that we have in the superintendent monthly, and a lot of new faces. I, I met the new NAPAC uh, chair um, as well, president. And um, so we talked about a bunch of things, but one thing is they're learning a lot more and realizing some of them didn't really realize the um, – forms that they need to fill out for the, the donations like mm -hmm. the NAMA did today. So we're going to start seeing a lot more of those things coming through. And um, it's a great, again, energetic group of people. And we're so lucky to have such active um, PTOs at our school, particularly the elementary schools and, and obviously at the middle and the high school. I'm good. I mentioned a couple of things during the great. student presentation. Great. Uh, just a couple quick things. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the Lieutenant Governor for coming to North Andover a couple weeks ago. We had a great um, session. We had two sessions at the high school 
Um, talk about healthy relationships. I thought the kids were extremely well behaved and really paid attention and uh, really want to commend Principal Jackson for running a, a great show. Um, and our reps, uh, Rep Wen and Rep Minakuchi joined us as well. So it was a really, really well attended event. Really happy about that. Um, hopefully at our next meeting, we'll get a little more information on the um, ed reform bill that um, the Senate took up today. A um, lot of numbers being thrown out there for, you know, the, the said bill is supposed to fund um, chapter 70 for the next seven years and I think there's a little controversy right now about what those numbers are really going to mean and whether we can really predict it with this uh, formula so I think uh, the vice chair and myself and Dr. Gillen talked that we'd like to have the legislators here probably sometime in November or early December to really because obviously they're gonna do it today I think the house is gonna take it up in two weeks who knows what the governor does to it I think when everything's said and done they're gonna put that to bed probably mid mid November so maybe our first meeting in December, we'd invite the legislators to come and talk to us about um, the impacts of that. So that's um, part of our plan, at least. Okay, seeing no uh, for this, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Ms. Lynch, seconded by Mr. McDevitt. All the favor say aye. Opposed, aye. no. The ayes have it. We are adjourned. Thank you. Are these for me, Dr. Bailey?